you, Cod. It's uh, 4 o'clock. i got to go work out in a few minutes, so we're going to make this as fast as possible. I'm going to give you basic information that you need, a little bit of extra stuff, and hopefully it'll be enough for you to get out on Liberty <coughs> ASAP. First of all, uh, the exchange rate. The official exchange rate on board the ship with the uh, money lenders is $1 equals uh, 3.65 dirhams, or something like dirhams. At the hotel, the rate is 3.55, so you, you lose 10 of these, whatever the smaller version of a Durham is, maybe it's lot keys or something. One Durham equals 27 cents. That should, that should get you in the ballpark. First thing I want to talk about now is taxis. Unlike the taxis in Bahrain, these guys are true, last uh, of the true free world capitalists. They will gouge you at every opportunity they get. In fact, some of the reports from the British that have been here uh, is that the taxi cab drivers like to charge Americans. Now, specifically, it's usually American Marines because they're not the brightest lights on the circuit. Uh, they charge them in dollars what they would normally be getting in Durham's. So normally, from anywhere here to anywhere in Dubai, right here. A river runs back and forth through here. That's one side of Dubai. This is the other side of Dubai. You cross the river, you can expect to pay about five dirhams more. Hail the cab from the street. And the way you hail the cab is your hand is out and you just, with the palm down, and probably not the left hand, they'll probably think you're offending their mother. Uh, use your right hand and just do this kind of a motion with your hand out like that and they should uh, pull over for you. Now, a couple of things to remember. One, if you get the cab from the hotel foyer, they're going to charge you an extra five Durham just for the privilege of driving up to the hotel to pick you up. And that's, that's a given. So what you want to do is you want to hail the cab from the street. Uh, okay. In the same way that uh, the old song goes that they always get prettier at closing time, the cab fares always seem to go up the closer and closer to curfew or the end of liberty. By about uh, 2200 tonight, they're going to know when liberty expires on board USS Cape Cod, and they will attempt, or many of them will, attempt to extort you. Again, you don't have the honorable cabbies here like we had in Bahrain where they try a little bit, but then they come down to a reasonable figure. What you want to do if a guy says, yeah, we'll take you there, but it's going to cost you $30, let him pass by. Maybe the next guy will say $25. Maybe the next guy will say $20. But pretty soon you're going to get an honest cabbie. A couple things to think about. If they do try to extort you, don't rob him. Don't beat him up. Don't break his cab. Don't cut his tires. Don't do anything like that. Be reasonable. Remember, when the police come, he speaks Arabic. And he's going to be able to tell his side of the story. And you will, one, probably have had something to drink, two, speak in an infidel's language, which they really don't want to listen to. And they'll believe the cabbie. So you'll get the opportunity to maybe spend some time in an Arabian jail, which might be kind of exciting for some of you, but I don't think so. It might be a sea story you can tell your kids, but it might not be a lot of fun. So what you want to do is just pass the extortion attempt by. Now, one of the other scams that they do run is they agree to a price, they drop you off, and then they want some more money, like they want an extra five bucks or something like that. The best thing that I can tell you there is go ahead and pay them the money, take the cab number down, and get it to us. And what we will do is we will send the cab number to the American Embassy, and they'll go ahead and they'll put something out, an official complaint to the Ministry of Defense, the Ministry of wherever, and uh, they'll take care of it. That's all we can do. But don't hop in the cab that's trying to extort you because you know you have a cheat right there at the beginning. If the guy does it on the back end, there's not a hell of a lot you can do. All right, some local uh, don'ts. Again, one of these liberty briefs would not be complete without a listing, a, a vir virtual litany of don't do this and don't do that. So I'll try to make this as painfully uh, short as possible because I do have to get to my workout. 
Number one, no PDAs, no public displays of attention anywhere in the United Arab Emirates. We're not talking about the pier in Bahrain. We're talking about anywhere. These people are not as progressive as Bahrain. These people are maybe just a step up from the Saudis in terms of uh, uh, um, their uh, ability to let people carry on. They're nowhere near as loose as the Bahrainis. Don't photo any of the locals in, uh, in, uh, in Arab dress unless uh, they're willing, they, they give you permission to beforehand. Absolutely no photos of any government buildings or policemen or police stations or embassies or anything like that. A good get rule of thumb here is if it's got a flag flying from it, don't photograph it. Now, I guess you can surreptitiously photograph it from the cab as you go along. They probably won't see that. Another thing, from the ambassador. This is from the ambassador. I don't want anybody to moan and groan about it. Nothing American is worn ashore. If you've got your favorite Texas A&M t-shirt or sweatshirt, no. Uh, if you've got your shirt that says, like, I have a real nice one says San Francisco on it, no. Can't wear it. Uh, no shorts, no sleeveless shirts, no tank tops, period. No exceptions. Jeans are okay, but there's, a, there's kind of a hook in there if you want to wear jeans, and that is that jeans are not permitted in some of the nicer bars and discos. And so you may be, t you may be turned away if you're wearing jeans and you want to go into a certain bar. They may, they may turn you away. So the, the heads-up guy will wear a pair of slacks, and that way you don't have to worry about getting turned away. Probably the most important information to put out, uh, the cost of beers runs between 8 and 12 Durham, depending on where you go. You go to some of the really uh, fine, fine places, they may charge you closer to 12. You go to some of the other places, they may charge you 8. I believe the Metro Hotel, which has the USO in it, charges about 7 Durhams for a beer, which is, let's see, oh gosh, well, let's see, about 2 bucks, yeah, close enough for 2 bucks. Next thing, phone calls. Quick one. Approximately $12 for the first three minutes calling back to the States. Uh, again, approximately a dollar a minute after that. It's actually about 89 cents. So, but you can, you can kind of count on about a dollar a minute after that. There is a one-third discount if you make your phone call after 2100 local time. Phones right now, there's 20 phones located at the USO, and I'll show you a, a chart of the USO where it's located. It's in the Metropolitan Hotel. And there's also some additional phones at the Seaman or the Mariners Club, which is within walking distance here. I don't think there's 20 phones, but there's at least a few phones where you can get started on those. All right. A uh, lot of stuff to buy here. The gold souk, the gold here is cheaper than in Bahrain. Everything else is available. And I'll point out some areas here when we do a zoom in. Definitely the most important information I'm going to put out, and that is the Liberty policy. It's as follows. E1 through E5, Liberty expires at 2400. E6 and above, Liberty expires at 0100. Now, we will entertain an overnight chit signed up to your department head and approved by the department head, but you have to have a hotel, a phone number, and a hotel room to get an overnight shift. Now we're going to have muster every morning. It's a work, working day, every day that we're here with the exception of Sunday. So you're going to have to be back on board. What time is Liberty? 7.15? The expiration of Liberty is 7.15. So you'll have to be back on board, but you can run an overnight shift. You just have to have the hotel room and the phone number that we can reach you with the hotel room number. Now, if you have an overnight shift for a hotel, the shenanigans or the entertainment goes on after one o'clock in the morning there's no problem but you have to be inside the hotel so if the entertainment runs until the early hours of the morning that's fine you can stay up and dance to your heart's content or drink to your heart's content as the case may be but you have to do it in that hotel that you are in again approved by the department head uh, phone number and room number all right just a couple of quick ones here give you a couple of ideas this is the Hilton Hotel and it's uh, $53 for a single or a double room. They uh, have a free welcome drink. They give you two cans of Budweiser, if you're into Budweiser. They have a beach club, which is, which is untouchable. It's got a pool, 
and a whole bunch of other things as a fitness center they offer free transport to the various shopping areas so there you're getting an idea there at the hilton fifty three dollars for uh, probably somewhere between fifty to seventy dollars depending on the hotel that you find now next thing i've got is i wanted to run the bus schedule by you no e6 and above have to do the same thing as everyone else if e6 and above want to stay out overnight we need an overnight chit for them too very straightforward they have to you know give the same gouge information as everyone else again it's because of the terrorist threat condition nobody is out on the street unless the, and stays out unless they've got a place to go back to all right let's see if we can zoom in on this and i'll give you a brief gouge on the the city here this is cape cod up here or a reasonable facsimile thereof this is the port facility there's three gates into the port facility gate number one can you see that or is it hopeless okay gate number one is here gate number two is here and gate number three is over here we want to concentrate on gates number one and two they're the ones that we're gonna have shore patrol at and they're also the most um, reasonable gates for entering into and out of the port facility gate number three is a customs gate and you're subjected to everything except a body cavity search when you go in and out of that uh, gate. So you want to try to avoid that as much as possible. It's just a, a lot of hassle. This one is much better. All right, over here, we have the uh, Metropolitan Hotel in the USO. And wherever we drive around out there, the Hilton Hotel is here. And just a couple of other ones. This area is called Satwa. So it's not too far. It's almost within walking distance of the ship. And this is where all the fast foods are on the chart. So basically, you go out the main gate, hang a right, walk what looks like a walkable distance, and you're in the Satwa district. It's got Pizza Hut, Hardee's, all kinds of food, pretty good stuff there. The Hilton is just down the road from that. Over here is the uh, Al Karma Shopping Center. This is where you can get some really tremendous deals on clothes, like the three-legged polo shirts, the two-legged alligator Izod shirts, everything made in Korea that they sell for $2 instead of $62 for the stuff. There's some normal shopping over here. Let me see if I can find the, uh, the uh, creek. Hold on. Ah, oh, there's the creek. The creek runs along through in here. There's a lot of shopping in this area, and there is a, a real stateside type of mall over here on the far side, and this is called the Al uh, uh, Gurar shopping center and that's like a, a stateside mall so if you want to go to the Al Gurar shopping center it's it's very much like a stateside mall over there that's kind of a quick and dirty I'm not sure what they shop for here hmm. all right the next thing the bus schedule pretty much will be running buses at uh, half hour intervals starting at nine o'clock in the morning there's no reason to send them any earlier than that because nothing is open prior to nine so that means if you've stayed out overnight, you're going to have to work your own way for getting home in a cab. We'll run them pretty much at half-hour intervals with the exception of, uh, well, gosh, I guess we're going to do just around about 20 hundred. We're to, we only have one bus going out at 20 hundred. And what they'll do is they'll leave the port facility. They'll go to the fast food area, drop everybody off or pick people up at the fast food area, go over to the Hilton down here, then go to the Metropolitan, and then go to Dubai Marine, which I haven't got a foggy, the foggiest clue where that is, somewhere, and then back to the ship. So we'll be running some kind of a, a scheduled bus run just like that, and it'll get you to some of the areas that uh, traditionally are, have a high population of uh, Navy usage. And let's see if there's anything else to add. We've already gone all over all the don'ts, the dress code. Um, there is no st status of forces agreement here, so if you get in trouble, uh, local laws and customs apply. Remember the, the one I told you about cutting off hands and stuff like that. They probably don't cut them off here. They probably just, because this is more progressive than Saudi, they probably just hammer them a little bit. Uh, most of the taxi drivers do not speak English, and they do speak Arabic, so they win in a disagreement. Uh, ah, good, good, good one. The only jog jogging that is permitted is within the port facility. It's unlimited within the port facility as long as you don't um, interfere with any um, unloading or offloading operations that may be pretty much the same rules of engagement as we had 
uh, in Bahrain, except that uh, we won't be hassled quite as much. Uh, we'll be able to run, just stay away from wherever any onloading or offloading maritime cargo is going on. But it has to be inside the gate. There is no jogging outside of the port facility. Swimming. Oh, okay. Um, so far, since Desert Storm started, we have in the UAE lost three sailors of various sorts to uh, uh, swimming accidents out on the beach. There is a hellacious undertow, and I don't care if you're a little UDT seal stud, if the uh, undertow gets you, you're going to go out and drown. McKee lost a person, and two other ships have lost people on this coastline, so use the pools to go swim. Don't try to go out in the surf or you'll possibly regret it. Um, the beaches are not to be swim. Uh, sw you don't swim there. Just bag some rays or whatever. Use the beach club for uh, the Hilton Beach Club. It has a pool. It has the sand. It has everything. It has drinks. That's uh, sort of uh, VHS tapes. Good. I'm getting fed this additional stuff. The VHS tapes here, two things. Number one, they're designed for the English television systems, not for American television systems. The American television systems are called NTSC, I think, and they don't record them to that system. They record it for the ones that are used in Europe. But even if they do have them recorded NTSC, uh, one of the things we've been warned, at, be warned about is because this is an Arabic country, they take your basic n uh, 90 to 120 minute film and cut it down to about a 45 minute abridged edition. It has all the profanity but all the violence and sex is cut out of them. So if you just want the profanity and uh, the abridged 45-minute version, that's what you're going to get. You're not going to get the whole film. So if you see that the prices on the VHS tapes are too good to be true, it's true. It is too good to be true. You're not getting what you would normally be getting. The name of the port that we're in? Oh, we're in Ra Ra Rashid. We're in uh, Dubai Port Rashid up at the north end of the... Town of Dubai. I don't know. There was a laundry truck there. I, I don't have any gouge. We'll get some information from the CDO. Uh, the only the only guidance we got on skirts is no short skirts. So I'd say probably the same rules of engagement that we used in Bahrain. If they cover the knee, you're safe. If they're modest, by their cut, you're you're safe. You know, anything hiked up real high is not going to fly. Uh, I will take uh, a couple of questions if there's some phone calls. They want to phone in any specific questions. I'll, I'll stand by for a minute or two. Keep the questions short. You're interfering with my workout. Money. Money exchange. All right, the money exchange. The official rate is $1 equals 3.65 durhams. The exchange rate you're going to get in the hotel is $1 equals 3.55 durhams. A durham is equal to approximately 27 cents. So you can figure it out whichever way is easier for you that way. All right? Well, the fact that they don't want uncovered people outside, I will say that bicycle riding is permitted within the port facility. So you can zoom around in a velodrome on board the port facility, not outside of it. Okay. Next. Uh, they didn't get the name of the pier again. Rashid. My, my Arabic is great, huh? R-A-S-H-I-D, Rashid. Port Rashid in Dubai. Is there a t-shirt possible? Do they have to have shirts have to have collars? No t-shirts. Shirts have to have collars, period. No t-shirts. Laundry service, the laundry people come at 0800 in the morning to pick up and drop off laundry. I'll get some guidance on that. Until I get you some guidance, no bikes outside the compound. I'll get some guidance on that. USO is the best place to exchange money. 
I think we're doing have some money exchangers on board here, though, don't we? And the not last day in port, they're going to sell, they're going to buy back Durham's from the crew on our last night in port on board here. So if you've got uh, Durham's, you can turn them back into dollars and these people will leave. Who will who take dinars? Oh, I'm sure they will. You mean Bahraini di dinars? Oh, yeah, I'm sure they will. The question was, will they the, the hotels take dinars? I think the answer to that is yes. It seems it's it's pretty much the money is interchangeable here in this in this area of the world. Are maps available, sir? Maps that you have? Are they available? You? No, no maps available. No, we'll try to get some maps out. I don't know where. This is just a Xerox copy of a map. I'll try to have some of these burned off. But again, all I've got is a Xerox copy. There are some, uh, there are some. I think in the hotels you can get these little Welcome to Dubai pamphlets that have a, a pretty good map on the inside of them. I've got one. It's something like Discover Dubai or one of those trendy kind of advertiser type things. And you can get them in the hotels. And the buses are only running on this side. Those okay, the buses are not going to the other side of the creek. I sure do. The gold souk is not too far. This is a winner. If this is the ship right here, you can zoom in. This is the ship. You go out, you make a left, and it's right across. Well, it looks like it's across the river. Right across the river is the gold souk. So, relatively speaking, that's not too far at all when you consider the USO is way the heck over here. Gold souk is right down there. So you make a left and you head down there. And the gold souk is on... Uh, sort of right off of uh, Al Ross Street. If you can get to Al Ross Street, you should be able to find the gold souk. Next question. They want to know if there's a, any ballparks here in the area. We'll find out about, we'll find out about that. Okay. Next. What's that? Yeah. Okay, the question is, uh, do we have to muster on station on Sunday? And the answer to that is yes. All hands muster on Sunday. That way we know you haven't been carried off by the PLO. We should be receiving. The uh, mail situation, to answer that question, we will be receiving mail probably daily. It will be sent down to us from Fujara. And we will be sending mail outbound. So as you say over the air that you're going to find out about the softball sporting event that you say you'll find out, because they just apparently didn't catch what you're talking about. Oh, all right. There was a question regarding softball fields. We'll find out if there's any softball fields available. That was not addressed earlier. There is a lot of athletic participation. If there's sports teams, they have a lot of people that want to do sports activities. We'll find out about the softball field. Any other questions? Once, twice. Oh, yes. This is for those of you that want a real adventure, and you're into adventures. If you want to go down to this shopping area, there's this real cheap ferry that you can get on, and it'll take you down the river and dump you off there. And I think the, the fee is something like, uh, oh, 20 of these. Oh, it's like 20, less than 27 cents, like for 5 or 10 cents, you can take this thing all the way across. And if you want to just charter your own boat for five dinars, they'll take you by yourself to the shopping area across the river on the ferry. But it's a real good deal and kind of local color, that sort of thing. Uh, the working hours, there's a question regarding working hours. Working hours are very, very straightforward. They are as follows. We, this is a full working port for the crew with the exception that on the day after your duty day, you have a liberty day. So in other words, if you have duty today, tomorrow, after the muster, et cetera, you have a free, you have a liberty day, 0800. Um, repair department is going, because the repair department has some TAVs, they're going to do a modification to that, but I am assured that repair department will get exactly the same number of days off as they would otherwise get. The rest of the crew, the day after liberty, is a, is a day, a free Liberty Day. 
and working hours until 16, 15 every day. We can we can answer that later. I'm not even going to grace that an with an answer. Persian rugs, question regarding Persian rugs. They're here in the same way they are in, uh, they were in Bahrain. Uh, there are some fakes. They, you know, they'll take you to the cleaners if you don't know what you're looking for. We'll try to get the name of a couple of reliable places like we did in Bahrain that were, were stand-up companies um, and did good business. Uh, I'll, I can get some names for you later on that. I, I don't have the names of any reliable places, but they do have Persian rugs. Okay. I'm not sure yet on the tours. The question regarding tours, I'm not sure on the tours. We'll get back to you on the tours whether or not we have any. Once? Any more? Twice? I'm not, I'm not going to deal with that one. That's it.